welcome into the ONCV Fantasy Football League. Week one of the playoffs are over, and both Joe and I survived <laughs> to tell the tale. Now only four teams remain in week 16, and boy, was it a crazy week 15. Joe, how does it feel to survive week one of the playoffs? It was amazing. I mean, I, I was a, a low seed. I just barely uh, elevated from the eighth seed to the seventh seed. I, uh, you know, doubted whether I was going to advance because I was such a low seed, even though my team had been on fire. Um, but man, the way these games played out this past, past weekend, you know, it's funny for those who might not know watching this, no money is on the line here. It's mm -hmm. just for TV. It's just for fun. But I'm invested in this as much as if I had money writing on it. And, man, my heart was racing over the weekend yeah. up through Monday night, and it was an absolute blast. Yeah, I was going to say, that's the, that's the fun thing about a fantasy football league like this where it's not any money, but everybody cares about their bragging rights. So everybody is really invested in their teams, and uh, it just makes it enjoyable because at the end of the day, if you do lose, it stinks, but you're like, okay, well, I didn't lose any money on it. Yeah. Um, so it's all fun and games, which is nice. But, uh, yeah, we both moved on, and uh, it was crazy. Like you said, there was a lot of scoring for the most part. A lot of – if like, my takeaway from this week for fantasy was, like, there was a lot of weird scoring as well. Um, kind of, like, some secondary guys that scored a lot, and then some of your stars scored, but there was a lot of injuries again. Yeah. Yeah, and um, a, a lot of – you know, we said last week when you're heading into the playoffs uh, – Start your studs, uh, you know, play the guys who got you there. And some of those guys did come through. Some of those guys did not come through. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, it was uh, – there was some high scoring in some situations. But, unfortunately, for those who did not advance, they were victims of their <laughs> reliable guys not coming through or not yeah. playing at all. And the first example of that is the highest scoring matchup of the week. Uh, myself, Hunt put up 153 points. Man, did that feel good. I was real nervous <laughs> playing Malik's team. And this is basically the exact thing that you just said. My studs went off. McCaffrey, Cup, Isaiah likely was huge for me. Rashad White, who's been super solid all season. They all showed up. And for Malik, Josh Allen didn't have to do a whole lot to beat Dallas. They ran the ball a lot. Jamar Chase got injured late in the game against Minnesota, but he didn't do anything crazy going into the game. Uh, CeeDee Lamb, he got kind of bailed out by a late touchdown run into the end zone. Travis Etienne didn't do a whole lot. George Kittle didn't do a whole lot. So exactly what you just said, my guys showed up, and Malik's uh, unfortunately did not in one of the biggest uh, blowouts of the weekend. Now, d doesn't Malik's squad lead the league in points? Yes. And – Every week heading into the playoffs, he was blowing up. And yeah. both of us were like, I don't know if I want to face that guy in the playoffs. Yeah. And I was stunned when his team failed to crack 100 points. Yeah. That really surprised me. And we saw that the past week, especially in our other league, in our big league, three of the top seeds all lost this week. Yeah. Now, they they scored for the most part. My team, my team did not. But uh, most teams scored pretty high. And they still ended up losing. So it, it was a tough week for, I think, a lot of teams just around the league. Yeah, we got to talk about McCaffrey's performance. You know, over the past month, the Niners has just been firing on all cylinders. Mm -hmm. And McCaffrey's performance this past weekend was a, a, a league winner. Anyone yeah. who started McCaffrey is advancing to the next round. Right. Uh, he was just spectacular. And I was screaming at my screen when uh, he caught that pass all by himself and kind of fell down. And then I'm like, yeah, get up. And he got up and ran into the end zone. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was, that was a blast. That was a lot of fun. Yeah. And it just goes to show why he is, he's going to be back to the number one pick again next year. Yeah. You know, people for a while, the last couple of years, because McCaffrey has been a little bit banged up um, and not always playing, people had started moving to the wide receiver position, but I don't know how you can pass him up at, the number one pick next year and cup. Yeah. He produced for you, but a lot of that came on one play yeah. where Stafford just threw a bomb down the sidelines. It was like right cup, out of the right out of halftime, basically. Wasn't I think it? so. And, uh, and cup just kind of made this fingertip grab where a lot of receivers would have dropped that. 
mm-hmm. somehow it stuck onto his fingertips. He pulled it in and went into the end zone untouched. And that's where he got the bulk of his points. Uh, but man, cup, when yeah. cup is playing well and healthy, he is fun to watch. And the mm-hmm. chemistry that him and Stafford have, it's, it's a blast. Yeah. I'll get into my thought process a little bit more moving forward when we preview next week's matchup, but, uh, I have some decisions to make and I'm a little nervous about it. Um, the other, uh, big matchup was Ian taking down Tracy's team 144 uh, to 118. I hate to say that this played out the way we talked about it, but it did. Um, now, maybe if we go deep into the woods and do some math, I don't know if it fully mattered. It <laughs> seemed like Ian's team just was right this week. James Cook had a gigantic week. Amon Ross St. Brown came back to normal. Um, and then... Tracy, we talked about, had a lot of decisions to make in that flex spot. She ended up going with Rasheed Rice. A lot of us thought maybe she should go with Sam Laporta. Really, it didn't look like there was a wrong decision there. Um, Maybe you could have said Hawkinson, but again, the matchup was just too right. I couldn't imagine sitting Hawkinson. And the way that Ayuk's played so well lately, for him to have a kind of a dud in the playoffs is just unfortunate. And I don't think that would be the guy that you would bench. So yeah, I'm not, not for sure. Laporta, yeah, it's hard to say where you know what it would have changed if uh, Ian didn't have Goff. Um, there was a lot of waiver wire quarterbacks that had good games, at least 20 points. Um, so I don't know. It's it's a unfortunate situation the way it played out. And honestly, both of them have a lot of points on their bench, which is crazy. Yeah. Let's uh, let's go back to last week's podcast. So. I think you revealed to me during the podcast that Tracy had dropped golf. Mm-hmm. And I was like, wow, really? And, and I don't want to make her feel bad. I know if she's listening to this podcast, I don't want to make her feel bad, but I was really surprised that she flat out cut him, especially considering that I think there was space on her bench to just bench him. Mm-hmm. Um, but she cut him, And then you put the thought in my head where you said, would it be wild if, Ian picked up Goff and started him. Mm-hmm. Now, prior to doing that, he had Geno Smith in his starting lineup. Yeah. Who, as we all know now, didn't get the start. Right. So he would have either, Ian would have had to have either started Geno Smith's backup, who ended up, you know, having a decent game at the end. But mm-hmm. um, it was either Geno Smith's backup or to hit the waiver wire. And it just so happened that he was able to pick up Goff and nobody. I don't think anybody expected Goff to blow up like he did. Five touchdowns, yeah, pretty much a perfect game, no mm-hmm. turnovers. Um, you saw it coming. I didn't see it coming, and that's exactly yeah. the way it played out. And I know Tracy was just sick as yeah. Goff threw touchdown after touchdown after touchdown. And it stinks to, to watch your hometown team blow up, but you're disappointed by it. And, you know, I wanted to have Ian in just to like pick his brain to see if he actually listened to the podcast. Cause right. I don't know. I don't know who listens to the podcast. I know Tracy for sure does. Um, but I didn't know if Ian had or not, but whenever my rule of thought is like, if you're playing somebody that has a wide receiver, you don't want them to have access to any chance to get that hookup mm-hmm. that they could have. So seeing that he had a Monroe St. Brown and being able to possibly pick up Jared Goff is a risky situation. But again, it's Tracy's first year in fantasy. She had a great season. Started off incredibly well. Yeah. Um defied expectations. And unfortunately, she found out the the downside of of fantasy football that stinks when you lose. Um but I think the other thing too is is we've all done it. Mm-hmm. You have you have the emotions running wild. Jared Goff had been struggling, and you're just like, I can't handle him being on my team anymore. And you kind of have like a spite drop, and then they go off the next week. And I, I think anybody that's played fantasy has has been in that situation. Yeah, one thing I learned a long time ago is I've had trades with uh, people in my league that I ended up facing the next week, and yeah. those players that I traded away beat me up. Mm-hmm. And so I've learned – Try not to ever do anything that will benefit your opponent as you're heading into a matchup against them. And dropping golf just uh, played right into Ian's hands. Yeah. Another player we have to talk about though was Cook, mm-hmm. uh, the the Buffalo Career running day. back. He he had a game 
for the ages. I don't yep. know where that came from, uh, but that's a big reason why he won too. Mm-hmm. Cook just went off. And I mean, I can take the fault for telling Tracy to play the Dallas defense because that was her other question mark because she felt like the Dallas defense hadn't been playing very well. And she followed, I don't know, my advice saying that, well, you know, Dallas is really good at making turnovers, so they yeah. can always have a chance to blow up. They end up getting zero, which is really unfortunate. Um, I don't know what other waiver wire options there were. I know the Raiders went off, but I wouldn't have trusted them in a weird game on Thursday night. But Dallas just looking bad kind of hurt her team and yeah. just one of those unfortunate things. So Adams showed up. You know, she was down on Adams. Yeah. Uh, you know, she may I can't remember if she benched him recently or not, but she was really down on him. And that's that's when I said, no, you got to play your guys, play your studs. Yeah. And Adams did have a nice game. Yeah, she was thinking about benching him, and then we said, no, I think we should play Adams, and that's where the, the flex conversation came in with Rasheed Rice or Sam Laporta. Yeah. Um, but like I said, I, I think the biggest one is Brandon Ayuk not coming to, to play, and honestly, the special teams of Dallas just didn't give her much points. All righty, moving to the crazy games now. The Monday night showdowns. We're going to start it with your matchup because you have a little bit higher points. You beat Sammy 117.08 to 116.12. <laughs> but that does not describe what actually happened. Joe, I'm going to let you tell the story from your perspective. Let me say this. I won a championship back in 2006 by one point. And that, until recently was the craziest fantasy experience that I had. It was nerve wracking. It like gave me an ulcer and I somehow pulled off a one point victory to win the championship. This past weekend, I was kind of down on myself because I didn't follow my own advice. And even though Addison had, hadn't been putting up uh, big numbers, he helped get me to where I was right. and I benched him mm-hmm. and I got too cute. I went on the waiver wire. Uh, I picked up OBJ cause he was coming off a big game. I started OBJ who only had one catch in his game. So heading into the Monday night game, when my squad was done, I was at 117 and I was beating Sammy by about 35 points, and he had Hertz and A.J. Brown yet mm-hmm. to play. And I knew that either one of those guys can score 35 points on their own. Yep. So I was fully expecting to lose this matchup. But I was went home, uh, got home by halftime to watch the rest of the game. And, you know, I had mentioned last week on the podcast, I said, this is going to come down to the Monday night game, mm-hmm. fourth quarter. Man, did I hit that on the on the head. So we're watching the game. It enters the fourth quarter. I still had a lead heading into fourth quarter. And slowly, Sammy is inching closer and closer and closer to me and ends up taking the lead by one point. And I thought, I'm done. So this is late in the fourth. And you and I are texting each other, and I said, the only chance I have is an interception. Mm Mm-hmm. And what does Jalen Hurts do? Threw a bomb in the triple coverage in the end zone and gets picked off. That yep. put me back in the lead. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Seattle gets the ball back. They can kill the rest of the game and set themselves up for a touchdown. Yep. So they're marching down the field. Clock's ticking. I'm nursing a one-point lead. And with about 30 seconds left in the game, Seattle has that touchdown to the rookie, mm-hmm. take the lead. And I'm thinking... Uh Uh-oh, there's still 30 seconds on the clock, and Philadelphia's getting the ball back. Yeah. Hertz gets the ball back. He takes off for like a 12 or 15-yard scamper. I check the score, and Sammy's regained the lead. Mm -hmm. There is less than 30 seconds on the clock. At this point, there's probably 18 seconds, 15 seconds. I just lost the lead to Sammy. There was only one way I was going to pull off a win, and that would be yet another Hertz turnover. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what happened. He throws that bomb along the sideline. Yep. It's intercepted, but it's reviewed. They look at it. 
did did the toe drag or not? I'm like, yeah, come people, on. People are still questioning it this morning because other angles came out this morning, and it's like <laughs> so close. Like, yeah. I never saw any of the pellets come up when, right. he, when they said that that toe had dragged, and I'm thinking, I can't tell. And mm-hmm. that's probably why the call stood is because it was just inconclusive. Yeah. So that interception took two points off of Sammy's score, and I end up winning by less than a point. Yeah, and it, it, the crazy part, too, like I texted you, the Seahawks player that intercepted it was, like, moving. And when he jumped, he had so much momentum. If he caught it, he was going to go out of bounds. Yeah. But luckily, his other teammate was in front trying to go for the tackle on the wide receiver, and he runs into him, slows his momentum down <laughs> just enough so that he can get his feet in. Yeah. And it was one of the craziest things I'd ever seen. So. It was a miracle. I mean, it, it really was a fantasy miracle. I had, I mean, I can't even imagine what the odds were on me pulling off a win yeah. with 30 seconds left in the game and behind. It was a fantasy miracle. It, mm-hmm. it, I've never seen anything like it. And I will be regaling this story to children when I'm an <laughs> old man. Yeah. Um, and I feel bad for Sammy because that is a rotten, rotten way to lose a game yeah. like that on a pick, the last play other than a kneel down mm-hmm. uh, of the game to lose. Yeah. Ooh, that's brutal. And and there was a, a play late where I can't remember if Jalen Hurts, he threw it to A.J. Brown. Oh, he was I think he was out of bounds. He mm-hmm. didn't drop it, but he was just out of bounds. So, like, there was another close play there late on that yeah. drive or something. So, yeah, it was crazy all around. I kind of wanted you to be punished for playing the def- the Denver defense, but uh <laughs> well, I got again, I got too cute there. I initially had picked up uh Cleveland, which I dropped and ironically Sammy, Sammy picked, picked up, up and started. They scored 13. Mm-hmm. I got negative 2 against the Lions. But in that case, I wasn't like disappointed in my defense. I was happy for the Lions. Right. I, I wanted to see the Lions score. Mm-hmm. Uh, but when I looked out and saw negative 2, I was like, "Uh-oh." Yeah. Um, I got to give credit to my Purdy, uh, Samuel, San Francisco stack. They came through again uh, three, four weeks in a row. I've been playing these guys in daily fantasy too, and they've been winning me money in daily fantasy. Uh, Purdy and Samuel, they're taking this momentum, uh, I'm sure, into the NFL playoffs, and uh, they're the team to watch in the playoffs. Uh, like I said, Beckham only had that one catch, which is a disappointment. Uh, Gibbs had a fantastic game. Mm-hmm. Uh, he is looking to be a star in this league. Yeah. What a game he had. Um, the one head scratcher on my roster is Bijan Robinson. He, he was almost like a healthy scratch and that happened earlier this season. Yeah. There was no injury report or anything like the last time they had said that he was like, was dealing with headaches and things like that. So there was like kind of a reason. Mm-hmm. This time there was no reason. It's just yeah. Atlanta Falcons, and they ended up losing to the Panthers. So yeah, hopefully their head coach gets fired. I hate to say that, but now he lost a fumble, and I I seem to recall the last time that he got benched, he lost a fumble. So yeah. it's like the team punishes their star running back because of a fumble instead yeah, some, of just saying go back in there. Some coaches are pretty are pretty yeah. big on that. So I yeah. don't know. The other guy I want to praise is Kyron Williams from the Rams. Uh, ever since he came. Off of IR, he's been giving me double-digit points week after week after week. Yeah, uh, people call him a league winner. 152 rushing yards. Um, the guy's just been incredible. So mm-hmm. those guys have been great. Um, Sammy uh, McBride. Oh, can you imagine? Um, here I am watching Red Zone, and I'm watching McBride get catch after catch after yeah. catch. Uh, in Connor too, Connor was uh, getting a lot of carries, and mm-hmm. I'm like, those two guys alone are going to beat me, yeah. and uh, I got lucky. But McBride, you know, it's kind of nice to see these uh, tight ends emerge yeah. uh, at the end of the season because now, come draft day next year, 2024, yeah. there could be a lot of tight ends to choose Especially from. Especially their young tight ends, too. Exactly. That's the fun part. So it could be an exciting position again. Yeah. Yeah, he got nothing out of Javante Williams, credit to the Lions defense. Yeah. And Saquon Barkley, holy moly, he that killed my other fantasy team too. Yeah, but uh, he did nothing against the Saints. Um, just a, an unfortunate, unfortunate game. And I will uh, say really quick, Debo Samuel is probably my most hated fantasy player. <laughs> One because of DFS, because we play DFS and we're in the same league. And I said that if I ever played Debo Samuel, it'd be the day that he doesn't get 
uh, touchdowns. But he's the kind of player that I stay away from, and I know you like these exciting players, but I just hate when you come up with a stat line and you have four <laughs> catches and you have two touchdowns on four receptions. Yeah. It just ah, I feel so lucky, but the, he does it consistently. He's probably – I hate to say he's probably the most consistent guy to be able to do that, though. So, yeah. I don't know. It's I don't see anything on Sammy's bench that would have made a difference. No. Uh, like I said earlier, I, I made the mistake of benching Addison. He scored 29 points. It was his biggest game of the year. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you better believe he's just going to stay in my roster the rest of the way. Yeah. And uh, he's going to be a target for me come next, next fantasy football season. He has been fantastic. And... Him and a healthy Jefferson on either side of the uh, the ball. Yeah. Uh, if, if they get a healthy Cousins back next year, that that is one of the most talented wide receiver duos in the NFL. Yeah, they're going to have to decide what they want to do at quarterback because uh, Cousins' contract is going to be up. So I, they got to figure out what they're going to do if they're going to keep him for a couple more years or if they're going to try to kind of do a soft rebuild. Um, in the final matchup, another nail-biter kind of with some unfortunate circumstances. Marie, the top seed, took down uh, Becky's team 98.6 to 97.8, and Becky played Tyreek Hill. Unfortunately, yeah. she had some uh, some family party and things going on, so she set her lineup Saturday. The Sunday call for Tyreek Hill being out was pretty late in the day um, or in the morning, but just before games, it came out that he wasn't going to play. And so she got a big zero from him, which is unfortunate. Um, I would have liked Marie to, to win by five so that it wouldn't have mattered because Becky had said that she would have played Drake London, who scored only four points. Um, so it would have felt a little bit better. But um, both yeah. of these teams underperformed heavily. Yeah, just about anyone on her bench would have been a, a game changer. Godwin yeah. had 25 points on her bench. Um, you know, I mean, not to... Not to rub it in on Becky, but every morning when I wake up, I watch uh, fantasy football now, mm -hmm. and they usually give you the inactives and actives uh, an hour or so before game time. And I saw Tyreek Hill was ruled inactive, and I tried texting Becky and saying, yeah. hey, Hill's not starting. And she didn't see my text until about quarter after one. Yeah, And you hate to go, oh, God, is it going to come down to starting Hill? And sure enough, yeah. When you lose by one point, that's got to eat at you. Yep. Um, so, like we said, Becky getting zero from Tyreek. DeAndre Swift didn't do a whole lot. Tony Pollard didn't do a whole lot. And then for Marie, Dak Prescott looked lost out there when Dallas was behind Buffalo. Um, that was a shocker. I mean, I, I thought at the very least the Dallas-Buffalo game was, was going to be a, a shootout. It was going to be a lot of fun. You yeah. know, maybe a, a preview of a playoff matchup. Mm -hmm. And uh, they look lost, and, and Prescott just underperformed. And it was shocking because Buffalo hadn't been playing all that well. Dallas had yeah. been playing well. Buffalo hadn't been. Mm -hmm. And, uh, boy, they came out and embarrassed Dallas. So that yeah. changes up the dynamics heading into the NFL playoffs. Yep. Um, and then Amari Cooper came up big late in that game. He had four catches for 109 yards with one big, like, 59-yard touchdown or something. Yeah, at where the he end walked the, the tightrope on the sideline. Yeah, he should have probably gotten it intercepted, probably should have been tackled <laughs> twice, but he made it to the end zone, which basically saved Marie's day. Um, but she was in the same situation where it came down to the fourth quarter, and DeAndre Swift got a couple of good runs late in the fourth quarter that got really spooky, and that's where uh, Becky took the lead. She had and, a nice cushion late, like six yeah. points or something and, late. And DK Metcalf had like one target or two targets at halftime, one catch, all the way up until the fourth quarter. And then that final drive, Drew Locke hit it to Metcalf, hit it to Metcalf, made and a that, crazy catch off of his hip. Yeah, that that one catch on the sideline, that reminded me of, of the Jefferson uh, performance last season. You remember mm -hmm. that where he just went off and was yeah. making these crazy catches? Mm -hmm. Metcalf was just catching everything at the end of that. And yeah. I think that spectacular catch on the sideline where he was like in triple coverage, yeah, that was the difference maker. Like yeah. after he made that catch, I looked at the scores and uh, Murray had passed. Yeah, because it, it was like a 20-some yard catch. So that's like three points there. Yeah, yeah, that was that was a big swing. and. For her, it's kind of frustrating, though, because she's going into next week with Dak Prescott playing bad. Derrick Henry having a historically bad day. I don't know if you heard. He had 20 touches for 10 yards. Wow. 20 for 10. Yeah. So he had wow. four He had four catches um, for one yard, 
and then he had like 16 carries for nine yards. It's insane. Wow. I was kind of laughing at the one moment where Henry was used as a blocker on yeah. a quarterback run, mm -hmm. and I'm like, what is happening here? How do you how do you run the ball behind yeah. Henry and have him block for you? That mm -hmm. was nuts. Yeah. Imagine being a Henry owner and going, no, don't block. Yeah. yeah. And then again, Travis Kelsey dropped another touchdown in this game. Yeah. Um, against He's New England. Been a little off lately. And, yeah. Uh, just the whole Kansas City team. And I was listening to sports talk radio, and and I guess they're shuffling um, coaching and management over in Kansas City trying to yeah. fix whatever's wrong. But uh, even though they, they won handedly this past Sunday, um, there's something not right in Kansas City. And I don't. I don't see them going deep into the playoffs. Yeah. So, again, we're into the playoffs. I hope you don't need any waiver wire moves, but maybe some random injury comes out. Um, so, looking ahead, Marie, the number one seed, taking on Joe, the I would say the hottest team in the in the league right now. Um, and your guys' projections are stride neck for stride. Yeah. 115, basically, 115. Um, you got any roster moves that you're going to do, or is this you're just sticking with it? Well, uh, uh, as you can see, Addison is back in my lineup. Mm -hmm. uh, he's projected 12 points. Uh, despite Robinson's performance uh, last week, he's going to stay in my lineup. I yeah. can't imagine him having back-to-back -back weeks like that. Mm -hmm. uh, the only change I'm looking at making, I mean, I would be okay with leaving Denver in as my defense against New England, yeah. um, but I am looking at another defense on waivers and um, – then I'll I'll have some time to decide which defense I want to start. Yeah, because like I said, for the most part, I've been having pretty good luck streaming defenses. This past weekend was an, an exception to that, right. but um, I don't have a problem starting Denver against New England. You know how they've been playing uh, right. lately. Uh, but my my lineup is is locked in. I'm a little I'm a little queasy about starting McPherson at Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. I see a little red, red rain cloud next to it. I mean, it's, it's going to be a bad weather game. Yeah. So I may look at an indoor a kicker that's going to be kicking indoor this weekend. Mm -hmm. uh, so I might make a tweak there. But um, yeah. I'm not benching Purdy in favor of Mahomes. Purdy stays in. And uh, for the most part, uh, all those skill positions are locked in. Yeah, I think Marie is only questioning defense. She might end up putting Buffalo since they're playing the Chargers. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, and you're going to be in another situation where it's a Monday night matchup. It's going to another witching hour situation yeah. where I'm going to have, uh, Purdy Samuel, um, going on Monday night. Does Marie have anyone going on Monday? Funny night? enough. Uh, she has Justin Tucker Tucker. So I, I don't want to keep putting things <laughs> into the air, but just imagine it coming down to some late field goal or something where you have a three point lead or something like that. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Could be crazy. I think you guys both have a Thursday night player. You have Kyron and Marie has Camara. So both the running backs in that game. So both of you guys will have a little bit of a start to your week and then some sprinkled players all yeah. around the weekend. It's going to come down to the wire though. And it's yeah. going to be fun uh, next Monday night. Will it be a Christmas miracle? <laughs> we'll see. Um, and then on the other side, it's me and Ian. Um, right now I'm projected 119 to 105. Um, I'm a little confused because I, I see that Detroit's numbers are pretty down. Like Jared Goff is only projected for 13 points. I get that they're outdoors at Minnesota, so it could be a little bit cold or something. Well, no, they play oh, in a dome. I was so, going to say, yeah. yeah. So they should be fine. So I don't know why their projections are so low. I'm not, I'm not going to take that seriously. Um, I'm going to treat it like I'm, I'm nervous about this game. Um, I have a lot of lineup decisions. So Garrett Wilson with Zach Wilson, uh, getting a concussion, had a terrible game last week mm. and Puka Nakua also struggled a little bit. Now he's still good, but I'm a little bit nervous about him. Um, also to have potentially three players on Thursday night yeah. makes me a little bit leery. They are playing in a dome, uh, in or New or no, they're host or they're hosting him at SoFi. So yeah. that's. That's uh, that's home field advantage, man. Right. It's, yeah, and it's hard to get away from those guys because at any moment they could go off. And having both their wide receivers, I think, could be pretty beneficial. But I got to figure out what I'm going to do with Garrett Wilson um, because my other options are A. Chan, who haven't been who hasn't been great lately. I'm almost tempted to go back to Thielen, which is crazy talk. 
Yeah. But Green Bay just got uh, shredded by um, slot receivers last week. And then I'm also debating about Ezekiel Elliott because he's playing Denver, who just is terrible against running backs, mm. and they play Sunday night. So I got some decisions to make, but uh, everything is pretty much else in uh, is locked in. I don't know if Ian's going to make any rash decisions. I don't know if he has too many to make. You know what was shocking? I see uh, Dalton Kincaid on his bench. Kincaid, I think, got a zero this past yeah. week, and that was very, very surprising. Mm-hmm. I don't think Knox did anything either. So no, they're, they're Buffalo, tight end or I mean, left out of the game. Josh Allen only threw for 75 yards, oh, which is man. crazy. Brutal. Um, so even Stephon Diggs had, I think he was three for 30, because I have him in my, my other league, and he that definitely helped me lose this week in that league. He only had like six points or something. So He needs Eckler to step up uh, yeah. against uh, Buffalo. Uh, St. Brown, you know, he puts up hundred yard games every week. Mm -hmm. Uh, so that should be guaranteed double digit points there. And we both, again, we both have Monday players. He has, uh, Zay Flowers in the nightcap. Um, the earlier game, he has Devontae Smith. And in the one o'clock game on Monday, I have Kansas city's defense going up against Vegas, but I also have Jake Elliott going on Monday uh, afternoon. And then to round it all off on Monday night, I have Christian McCaffrey and Isaiah likely. That's a pretty Mm. good uh, duo right now to have yeah. to maybe secure a win for me. So heading into that game, Ian is going to need to be up by at least fifty points. Uh, <laughs> to be anything less than that, and you, you're just to feel comfortable. Distance. Yeah, because McCaffrey. Yeah, yeah, you never know. I would like to be for me personally. I would like to be within twenty points. Thirty points starts to scare me because Isaiah likely has been good lately, um, but. I don't know. That game could be a defensive battle, so I'm a, that's where I'm a little bit nervous. Mm-hmm. Um, but hoping for the best. So we'll All see. Right. Are we you gonna uh, make a prediction, or are you just gonna let it play out? A prediction on who's, who's gonna win. Who who's gonna make the championship game in the ONTV? You know, fantasy football. I'm kind of ready for the storyline for it to be you and me, <laughs> so that next week we can just talk about <laughs> the championship game. And we have faced each other in the championship game in the past, right? <sighs> yes, we did. Yeah, was so, that two seasons ago? Yeah, um, that didn't work out well for me. I mean, it almost <laughs> did. I had to work some magic to get close, but. Yeah, so I think that would be fun for sure. Yeah. Um. Obviously, I'd like to see Marie go on because then it could be me versus Marie. Yeah. So basically, whoever wins on your side, I'm fine, but I can't let Ian win this week. <laughs> <laughs> That's the basics. All right. Well, um. Whatever but, happens, this this has been fun and yeah. uh, even more fun heading toward the championship. Yeah. So next week we'll we'll recap semifinals. We'll go over the championships, and then we'll probably do one more like recap episode with. Uh, maybe a couple guests or something. Maybe we'll do some some bigger thing as a, a recap trophy ceremony, perhaps. Yeah, right. Um, we'll see. But uh, good luck to the four teams remaining, and uh, we'll see two of you in the championships.